Hi everyone, welcome. I'm the Retro Repair Guy. So this is officially episode number four, although I've released five episodes so far. I have a mini episode 3.5 out there. So if you've made it this far, you even saw in the title there was Xbox and you still clicked on it. So before you go anywhere, why do we need another Xbox video? Well, let me tell you, this year marks the 20th anniversary of the Xbox. Now the Xbox was released in 2001 by Microsoft. And uh, I see a lot, a lot of videos out there of people modding them, uh, ripping out capacitors, which I'm not too fond of. And I also see, of course, some beautiful mods to them, like repainting them and uh, fixing them up. But I haven't seen anybody restoring them completely to their original state. And this is what I do here. So, of course, at the thrift store, I found a 1.0 console. Now, this is according to the serial number. This should be a manufactured in uh, Mexico 1.0 version, which is the very, very first one. And I haven't taken a look inside yet. I haven't even plugged it in to see if it works. So we're gonna do that together. So before that, let me give you a little, little history on it. And then we're gonna jump right in. The Xbox was released in 2001. And although its successor was released in 2005, it was only discontinued in North America in 2009. The Xbox was the first console offered by an American company since Atari went out of business in 1996. Being a bit late in the game, and seeing as how the Sony PlayStation had sold over 100 million units, the Xbox still reported sales of over 24 million consoles as of 2006. The console managed to open the door for the 360, which Microsoft reports selling over 84 million units. The Xbox was the first video game console to feature a built-in hard disk drive and the first gaming product which allowed real-time Dolby Digital encoding. The console's hardware featured a 32-bit 733 MHz custom Intel Pentium 3 CPU, 64 megs of unified DDR-SD RAM and a 233 MHz GeForce 3 GPU made by NVIDIA. The operating system was a heavily modified version of Windows 2000. Several hardware revisions were made, mostly in an attempt to battle modding and to cut manufacturing costs. But one of the biggest problems was the DVD-ROM drive. It wasn't very reliable, as many of the units gave disk reading errors due to the unreliable Thomson DVD-ROM drives that had been installed. Later revisions switched to a better version of the Thomson, the model TGM600 DVD-ROM drives and the Philips VAD6011 DVD-ROM drives. However, these drives were still vulnerable to failure. No matter what flaws it had, the original Xbox was undervalued and revolutionized the video game market. Its Halo series ushered in a new age of first-person shooters and online gaming, one of the principal features of today's gaming consoles. I begin by testing the unit. Pressing the power on button turns it on for only a second and it shuts off. Then the power on button doesn't work anymore. I press the eject, it turns it on, but only for a second again. The screws are located under the rubber feet and two of the labels. By pouring some alcohol on them, you can help loosen the glue and remove them gently so that we can glue them back on after. For the labels, you can use a sharp edge to lift one of the corners, then add more alcohol. You only need to peel it back enough to reveal the screw.
this motherboard has definitely seen better times. Also note that the version 1.0 is the only one that has a fan on the GPU. Upon closer inspection, we can see that the clock capacitor has leaked and caused some damage on the board. Removal of the heatsink fan will make it much easier to clean as well as make the removal of the heatsink much easier. So again, you want to make sure that you're twisting left to right as well as pulling upwards. This will make the removal much easier. Most of the heatsink compound on the CPU remained on the heatsink. However, on the GPU, it's stuck and the alcohol has absolutely no effect on it. Okay, so two small things I want to tell you about the heatsink. Uh, first of all, when you're removing it from the board, twist it and pull up. So twist, pull up. Don't use any tools. Um, don't do any, it's going to be really hard to get out. It's been 20 years. It's been there. It's stuck unless somebody has been there before, but I don't think so. Um, so twist, pull up. The other thing is I see a lot of people using credit cards, uh, screwdrivers, you name it, and gouging these things. You don't want to gouge them. Okay. There's a product for everything. Now, a lot of people are using alcohol. Normally it does a trick. Uh, some isopropyl alcohol or I use 99%. And you put it on a few times, you rub it, you rub it with a Scott towel or anything like that. It'll come off. But when it doesn't come off and it's like a wax, a, a hard, hard wax on it, contact cleaner. Contact cleaner is the key. It will melt it right off. You do not have to use any force. This is, you know, there's a product for everything. And this is a motherboard. You don't want to be using force on any of these components, not on 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 the CPU and not on the GPU, and you don't want to gouge this. Use some contact cleaner, spray it on, leave it for like 10 seconds, and you'll see it comes like a paste and just washes right out. And I took some video of that. Let's take a look. So all I'm doing is spraying on the contact cleaner and let it work its magic. I leave it for about 10 seconds and then wipe it off. You can see that the contact cleaner turns the stuff into a paste that you can easily remove. The contact cleaner is also safe to use on the CPU and the GPU. So officially this is my first time working on these because it's the first time I remove components and put them back in. I did some mods when I was younger on them, but uh, I never had to remove capacitors and put them back in. Uh, even though it's 2001, I believe that they were using um, a lead-free solder plus something in it. I had to crank up my iron all the way to 440 degrees and uh, use a lot of flux add some solder and then it'll come out. Uh, plus of course the fact that it's a two-sided board so the components, even the capacitors are actually connecting on this side and the other side. So just do not use a 40 watt iron and take your time with this. It will come out, everything will come out nice and clean and you'll still do a beautiful job. So this is the infamous clock capacitor. It's a simple 1 farad 2.5 volts. I will be replacing it with the same value but 2.7 volts. As you can see the damage is quite extensive but I've managed to remove some of the residue with a toothbrush and some alcohol before soldering the new one in. The new Nishikon capacitor is a bit smaller in size but has a slightly higher voltage and I chose a capacitor that is rated at 105 degrees. All right, so I want to try something. Um, my board is full of capacitor juice as well as flux. And I saw people putting boards in the dishwasher. Yes, I saw it on internet. Don't try that at home. But <laughs> I am on internet, so I'm trying it. Um, the, I, I, look, I paid $9.99 for the thing, okay? That's first of all. But second of all, I found an old Xbox motherboard in my things. So I won't risk mine right away. I'm going to see how it turns out. And if it works, I'm putting mine in. I, I really promise you I'll do it. And uh, the thing is, I love to drive my wife nuts, okay? She sees me washing this stuff all the time in the sink. It drives her insane. But I'm going to sneak up on her and ask her to put this in the dishwasher and see how she reacts. 
Hey, baby. Yep. Could you put this in the dishwasher for me? Seriously? Yeah, seriously. Could you put it in the dishwasher for me? On top or bottom? Uh, I don't know. Let's go for the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> While I wait for the result of the dishwasher, I begin on the power supply. While nothing seemed wrong with it as we saw the unit power on, the capacitors on it are now 20 years old. Recapping this board should give the unit a new life and keep you playing worry-free for a long time. Let's not forget the CD player. While I wasn't able to test it yet, the unit would not be restored without servicing this important component. Changing the belt and cleaning the laser will not only ensure proper functioning, but give you additional peace of mind. To access the belt, you'll need to remove the bottom cover. Then, extend the tray all the way out. There are then two tabs, one on each side, that you can push out of the way to pull the CD tray out completely. I always recommend cleaning the pulleys to remove any residue and ensure that the new belt will adhere properly. To reinstall the tray, simply align it and push it all the way in. Before replacing the bottom cover, I cleaned the prism with a bit of 99% alcohol. I then do the same for the lens on the other side. If I'm going to restore this unit properly, I'm going to take the case apart so that I can clean it thoroughly. Okay, so just a little word of caution for the dishwasher. It did work for me. It's beautiful. It removed the residue that I wasn't able to remove with the toothbrush and the alcohol. However, first of all, air dry only, no heat dry. Yes, you can use soap. Second of all, don't think you can pull it out of there, put it in your console and turn it on. It's going to blow up. There's water that gets underneath the little chips here. Okay, so even if you think it's dry, when using a blower, you'll see the water will come out from underneath the chips. And please don't use like a high uh, PSI for working like a nail gun thing or something like that because that'll blow the components right off. So you need to just use some kind of air or a very low PSI just to take the water out of everywhere and let it dry an extra 12 hours. If you don't have anything to blow air, just leave it out for at least a week. But yeah, a week, the water's got to get out from everywhere in there. But otherwise, it did a beautiful job and um, I would definitely do it again in the future, but I'm not telling you to do that. Don't do what you see on internet, all right? So here's what the board looked like when I pulled it out. 
And then here's what it looked like after I brushed it down with a bit of alcohol. And then finally, you can see the result of the dishwasher. I'm adding a small piece of electrical tape to cover the fragile area that had been damaged by the capacitor leak. So I wanted to apologize for something. Um, on this show, I normally change all the capacitors. I wasn't able to change them all because um, the little ones, as well as a couple of values, I don't keep in stock here. And I normally get my stuff overnight, but it's been over a week and the courier's having trouble getting here. Uh, so some states are having some really bad weather and my heart goes out to these people. So the thing is, um, I don't think it'll affect the functioning because I think the problem was around the clock area as well as some resistors having fallout. But as soon as they get here, I will change the rest of them and this unit will be restored to 100%. All right, so it's time to power on the unit and see if it works. So far, so good. It's not shutting off. And great, there you have it. It seems to be working. Uh, I don't think you need to see me adjust the clock. It's normal the first time we turn it back on. So let's pop in a game and see what happens.
Well, it's loading. And uh, I'm letting it run because I want you to see this. That's working. Uh, I just uh, skipped at the beginning the uh, when I pressed the start button to put my name in and stuff like that. But uh, otherwise, it seems to be working. I'm really, really happy. And uh, I don't know. I'm going to keep testing it and keep playing with it. So one last test I'm performing on the unit is shutting it off and unplugging it from the wall. I'm leaving it 15 minutes to see if the uh, clock is going to be retained by the new installed capacitor. We've given this unit a new life. So this concludes episode number four. I'm so happy I fixed this thing. I know it's a version 1.0, so some of you will say, yeah, but they got better with the versions. They made modifications to them and made them better. But this is part of my nostalgia. This is the very first thing I went out and bought uh, when it came out. And I have no idea why I ever got rid of it, by the way. But it's replaced now. It's definitely going to stay in my collection. Plus my daughter, she's four years old. She saw me play Spider-Man and she wanted to play. So I'm going to install this thing in my home theater and I'm going to share that experience with her. I think it'll be beautiful. So as always, I just want to say thank you so much for watching and I see you guys next week. Bye-bye.